Okay, regarding the examination of the vital sign, what is remained from, is the first of all, or the third one is the respiratory rate, the temperature, and lastly, the pulse oximetry. In the assessment of the respiratory rate, you have to make the patient think that you are going to check his pulse while you, you, while you are looking at his chest and to see uh, how many times the chest is uh, recoiled and which indicates the respiratory rate which is normally from 14 up to 18 and uh, sometimes it is uh, lesser than this. If the patient had the uh, respiratory for full minute you have to check it. If the patient had lesser than this uh, range, this is what we call it bradyhypnosis. Uh, if the patient had uh, more than this range, that's to say up to more than 18 and more than 20, this is what we call it uh, tachypnea. If the patient had lower than this range, lesser than uh, 12, some suggest 10, we call it bradypnea. And a patient who had complete cessation of breathing, we call it apnea, and we have to know about the causes of that. After that, we have to check the temperature of the patient. Really, you have to know the normal temperature of the patient, which is 36.4 up to 37.2, uh, and you have uh, to know that there is daily normal variation of about 0.4 to 0.5 from early morning into the 4 or 6 uh, p.m. and this is normal variation and you have to know that the core body temperature or the uh, real actual body temperature is the rectal temperature which is 0.5 higher than the oral temperature and that of the axilla or groin is about 0.5 centigrade lower than the oral temperature. Uh, really we have many methods or many ways in which we can measure the body temperature. First of all is the oral temperature. We have external auditory, we have the forehead, axilla, groin or even the rectal uh, method and each or each way is chosen according to the clinical status of the patient and his age. For example, if the patient is comatose, you cannot check his oral temperature. Instead, you can use his axillary uh, temperature, corrected axillary temperature or even the rectal temperature. In a patient who is younger than five years of uh, old, we usually choose the corrected axillary temperature, while those uh, who are, uh, for example, uh, we would like to check his exact body temperature, we check his uh, rectal body uh, temperature. All these issues are about the body temperature. We have to put also another issue in our mind that the body temperature, if it is increased 1 centigrade, there will be, generally, there will be 10 beats increment in the pulse, absence of this increase with the elevation of the body temperature, we call it relative uh, bradi, uh, bradycardia or uh, pulse temperature dissociation. I had many causes in the form of, for example, typhoid, brucellosis, drugs, and so on. You have to check about them. Lastly, we have to check for the pulse oximetry using pulse oximeter. This is the pulse oximeter, and I'll check the patient left index first of all. You have to choose two or more than this uh, areas. And we will see here the saturation of the oxygen. Saturation of the oxygen of our volunteer is 99. Is 99. This is the 99, and this is the pulse rate, which is 90. And then you have to check the contralateral side. Also, it is calculating now. It is also 99 and the pulse rate, this is now it's 100 and the pulse rate is 92. And we have to know that the pulse oximetry can detect hypoxia before the patient becomes cyanosis. And we have many sentences in which the pulse oximeter is not accurate. For example, if the patient had hypothermia or uh, severe vasoconstriction or the patient have cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, this will not be functional. Uh, on the other hand, if the patient had severe tricuspid regurgitation, this uh, device will signal the venous instead of uh, capillary uh, uh, signal. Uh, really, this uh, device, pulse oximeter, will detect the saturation of oxygen inside the blood. The saturation, not the partial pressure or the tension. The tension or the partial pressure of oxygen is detected by a sampling from an arterial site. Uh, really, we have uh, additional uh, three issues the candidates should know about them. 
is uh, these issues are patient with methemoglobinemia who the pulse oximeter will be falsely lower than the normal it uh, detects the saturation of oxygen to about 85 the saturation percentage of uh, oxygen saturation which is not uh, wrong while the arterial uh, tension oxygen tension will be normal uh, patient with carboxy hemoglobinemia the pulse oximeter is also misleading in which the saturation of oxygen will be higher than normal approaches 100 while the pulse while the tension of the oxygen from the arterial side will be uh, normal uh, the third and the last issue is the patient with the very high white blood cell count in mature cells those uh, patients uh, will have the normal saturation of oxygen while the uh, oxygen tension inside their blood will be low uh, in this state the uh, patient with very high white blood cell count the uh, saturation of oxygen via pulse oximeter will be more accurate than the blood because of the conception of the oxygen